Hi there my crafty friends. In today's video I'm going to show you how to make some loaded pockets using this gorgeous kit from Louise Heinzel. I'll put the link to her Etsy shop in the description of this video. The kit is called Vampire's Diary and this is the ephemera pack that you get with that theme. I thought it was well suited with Halloween coming up so I'm going to do a Halloween themed um, loaded pockets. I'm going to make two of those and as you can see the kit has got beautiful grungy colors and some deep reds, a lot of black and brown, there's cobwebs, there's also some beautiful flowers which contrast really well with the skeletons and the medical equipment that you see um, through the kit. It's really really unusual. The, it prints really beautiful. The colors are bold. Here you can see some vintage colored um, cards with the black image on the top with the spade and a scissors and an injection which I really like. There's some beautiful bugs. There's a bright red moth, the spiders, the bats and with the vintage text in the background. It's really beautiful and inviting and I can't wait to get started. To start, I'm going to create the pockets first. I'm making it roughly an A5 size and I've gone into my card stock pile and I've just collected the colors that I thought would suit this project. I have the Kaiser Craft brand, they're double sided and there's some beautiful colors that I think suit this project. I'm going to use this black with what looks like a map on top and then a red. I'm not measuring with the ruler, I just have an A4 paper that I folded in half and I'm roughly measuring the size of the paper that I'm going to cut with my cutter and then fold it in half and I'm doing the same both with the black and with the red. This will be the base of my pocket. These will be the foundation of my pockets, but they'll also be a pocket on their own. I'm going to create a thumb notch at the top of each so that I can easily insert and remove ephemera. As the cardstock on the inside will be visible when I cut the thumb notch, I want to put a matching color on the inside. So I'm taking a small strip of each of the colors that I've used and putting it on the inside, just about three centimeters that I'm cutting and attaching that with the glue stick on the top upper part of the inside of the pocket. It may sound a bit confusing but you'll see now what I mean. To create the thumb notch I'm just going to cut it freehand. I don't have a punch that size and just to get it accurate I'm going to use a small plastic cup that I have as a template that I will trace around and I'm just going to measure on the inside. I'm going to find the center of the piece of cardstock and then measure about two centimeters up because I want it about two centimeters deep. I will trace around the cup and that will be the half circle that I'm going to cut. I do the same for both. And you can see now how the contrasting color is in the back underneath the thumb notch so it shows and suits the theme. So all my blabber made sense in the end. There will be an additional three pockets on each of these and I've just found a contrasting paper that I, I like the blacks, the reds and these greys and I like the little chevron too. So I just cut a piece that I think will be about this right size and this will be the first pocket at the top and I carry on until I find um, additional ones that suited. I'm not going to have these exactly the same. They will be matching and coordinating, but they won't be identical. 
If you don't have card stock to use for this, you can also make your own papers. You can just use plain paper that you can paint or use with pencils. You could also use cuttings from magazines or old journals. Anything really goes. I just have these papers and I thought it would be a good way to use them. As I work, I'm checking the colours against the kit of ephemera that I've printed and trying to coordinate these colours with the colours from the kit. Before I glue or stitch all the pockets together, I'm going to decorate the very bottom front pocket. And I'm not attaching anything yet. I want to see if I need to sew anything or run anything under my sewing machine before I commit and glue anything down. The kit also includes these mini pockets with the thumb notch which I really like and I'm going to add one each on the very bottom pocket as an additional space for more tags. A little tuck spot if you will. I don't have a premeditated idea of how I'm going to do this bottom decoration. I'm just going to go through all the items that I have, my embellishments, my trims and I'm just going to work on the composition and I'm going to add some things, some things will work, some things won't. I just work through everything at my own pace until I'm happy with their composition. One thing I will do before I stick the embellishments down is I'm going to secure the small mini pocket with a thumb notch with the sewing machine. I'm going to stitch around it just with a simple running stitch with black thread just to keep that in place and then I'll embellish over that. I want to have it full of texture and dimension, so I'm going to build the layers. This is some cheesecloth that I have and then some hessian that I'm cutting some strips off and I'm just adding it as I go. I'm not quite sure of where I want everything. I'm going to work on the composition, add elements, remove element, elements until I'm happy with the final result. This is a process on its own and sometimes it's really quick, some things work straight away, sometimes it can take really long to get things that you're happy with, but I go through my die cuts, buttons, everything I have and work through it and build it up. Now because this took quite a while for me to get the composition as I wanted, I've put the speed of the video quite high so that it doesn't take up a lot of time with me moving elements around, but you can get an idea of all the different things I did try until I was happy with the result. I have these mini playing cards that I thought would actually suit this quite perfectly and I was quite happy that I remembered I had them. I'm going to vintage them up a little bit so they suit the style of this project and I'm doing that with some tea bags and also the tissue that I've used to dry the tea bags on. It gets a beautiful rusty tea stained colour. I'm using some Mod Podge on the little card and then adding the tissue and the tea bag to give it a little bit of a vintage feel. This beautiful rust color is actually from a herbal tea. It's a South African tea called Redbush, also known as Rooibos in South Africa, that actually I found when the tea bag dries, it has a much more intense color and brings out that beautiful dark copper. So I'm really addicted to drinking that tea now. Thankfully, it's herbal so that I can get the tea bags and work on the projects.
Once the glue or Mod Podge is dry, I'm going to add some inking on the edges too, just to not have that bright white, just distressing the edges a little bit. I'm going to add one more layer of the sealant of the Mod Podge just to secure the ink. And then these little cards are ready and don't they look stunning? My little clusters are ready, I'm quite happy with those, but before I stick them I'm going to secure my pockets together. I'm going to do a stitching on the sewing machine, a zigzag round the, each side and the bottom, which will keep these together. And I've put some extra thread in some areas so it looks like the machine has bunched up the thread. I really like that look. I've just taken some additional thread, bunched it up and pushed it under the foot of the sewing machine as I'm sewing. And now these pockets are ready for me to finish the embellishing. And then we can get on to the tags and ephemera. I'm going to use a hot glue gun to attach these. I made a little bit of a oopsie here. When I added the hot glue, I added some at the top of the playing card, which was not correct because I didn't want to attach that part to that pocket. So I'm quickly just peeling it off. And in the process of doing this, the card bent forward a little bit and got a little bit warped. But in the end, I actually quite liked the way it looked and I did the same to the other card. And my second whoopsie is I forgot to add the hessian strip on the first pocket. So I'm just lifting up some of the elements and putting that underneath and you wouldn't even tell that I had forgotten it initially. I'm using a black marker to edge this little clock image only because I want it to stand out a little bit more and you can't really see in the video but it actually does make a difference when it is sitting next to the other lighter elements that are in the background. The pockets are ready, now it's time to fill them. 
This part of the video I'm also going to increase the speed as it is a lot of fussy cutting and repetitive work but I will explain what I am doing. Each element that I'm using from the digital kit like these bingo cards I'm attaching to a cardstock. This is to make them more sturdy and for also for them to have a background that you can journal on. For these bingo cards I'm using a corner rounder and I'm distressing the edges with some ink. You will see I will do the same with all the tags and ephemera at sticking it onto a cardstock. And I'm using cardstock that is complementary to the rest of my theme so everything blends in and matches. I'm going to add an eyelet onto each one. I have some gold ones and some pewter ones that I think suit the theme. I'm using a corner rounder for the bottom two corners of each tag and also distressing the edges with ink. Just punching my hole here and then I'm going to add and set the eyelets. I have this beautiful ribbon that has got vintage script on it that I'm going to use on two of the tags. I'll pull through a small section and then I'm using a piece of hessian thread that I'm going to tie around into a bow across the top part of the tag. For the other two tags I'm going to add just the hessian string. I'm putting a double piece of hessian and tying it into a very large bow. I do like these elements to stick out and spill over. For the next tags I'm not going to do very much to them because they're quite detailed on their own. I'm just adding them to the cardstock. I'm going to round the corners and distress the edges. For these cards, I'm not going to use a cardstock for the backing. I'm going to use a piece from a no novel, and I'm doing that because I have a small piece of the same paper on the embellishment on the front of the pockets, and I wanted just to blend that in and bring it through to the rest of the project. Not all the tags need ribbons or strings attached to them. The previous two with the white roses I've just left plain and I actually haven't even punched a hole. For these I'm not going to add anything but I am going to take a black marker and just do some scribbling circles around the hole just for something different. These mason jars are gorgeous. I love their colour. They've got a gold text printed on them with some black edging. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm going to keep them as is, just backing them on the cardstock to make them sturdy and they will just go into the pocket as is.
a few more tags and we're nearly done these two I'm going to add a plain white ribbon there is some white elements through the digital kit I uh, want to enhance a little bit and contrast and with the cheesecloth I've used on my cluster on the bottom corner I'm just going to add the white ribbon to enhance that And now it's time to load these babies up. Again, I have no plan with this. I'm just adding them as I go. I have an equal amount for each pocket. So I have the same amount of items. Obviously the designs are different. And I'm just putting them in just to see where the colors go, what's matching, what goes well next to each other. And I move them around a bit until I'm happy with how it's all laid out. As an extra little something, I've taken a small piece of text paper and made it into a little roll and tied it with a string. It's like a little baby scroll that I thought would look cute and I'm just attaching that as part of the embellishment for the one pocket. The other pocket will get a little number from a vintage bingo game that I have. It'll be the number 54 which I will glue now and I've also added some coffee stained mini envelopes inside the pack. I felt it needed something else at the very back on in the large pocket so I have these jumbo playing cards that I'm going to vintage up a little bit and put some red blood stain kind of vampirish feel to them and add them as a final element to my loaded pockets. So what I'm doing to these is I'm adding some dress pattern tissue paper to them that's got a beautiful brown vintagey feel I'm leaving some of the writing visible and I'm attaching those with some Mod Podge I'm also adding additional bits that I'm scrunching up with my paintbrush to give a little bit of texture which will look really good when I put the ink over it and it'll make darker and lighter areas once the Mod Podge is dry I'm doing the distress ink around the edges and then also putting the, the spongy applicator over the other additional bits and as you can see it's bringing darker elements that look like stains. I'm now mixing a deep red color which I'm going to use to drip down at the top. It's just acrylic paint that I've watered down and I'm using my spray bottle to let it water down and run down and one of them will also have a little bit of black. Um, it looks a little bit like a blood stain which I think suits the vampire theme. I'm also adding some little bloody splashes and then I thought just to continue that onto some of the other elements the two little tags that go in the very front pockets I brought those into and did some of the blood splatter as well I'm so happy with the way these turned out. I had a beautiful digital kit to work with and I'm very happy with the results. I think the little bit of red that I added onto these front cards works really well and connects the elements together and brings a little bit of that red down. I'm just going to go through each little card just so you can see what the final result looks like. This was a beautiful kit that was created by Louise Heinzel, available in her Etsy shop. She has a kit available to be able to make a journal. And then this is the ephemera kit that goes with it. It's a vampire diaries and it's absolutely beautiful. I really enjoyed working with this kit and I actually have some more ideas for some of the remaining kit that I have left and I'm going to make additional projects to keep your eyes peeled for some additional vampire diaries. I'd like to thank you very much for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed it and got some inspiration for your own projects. I would really love it if you subscribed to my channel and if you hit the little bell button so you get notification every time I upload a new video. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.